I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about web features, form design, color pickers, and more. Let's check it out. First up, Nick, we've gone over the website caniuse.com previously on this show. It's true. It's very true. Now, caniuse.com is a very, very informative website where if you are looking to see whether or not you can use a certain element or attribute on your web page, it will tell you what browsers have support. So for example, if I click on the audio element, it will tell me which web browser and which version support it, as well as any features and known issues. Now, while this website is completely awesome, there is now a command line tool that interfaces with caniuse.com. You can install this with Node.js, just do a global npm install of caniuse-cmd, and then you can go ahead and use the caniuse command and put something in there afterwards. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So for example, here we are on my MacBook Pro, I can say caniuse and something like svg. And then we can see right here on the output, it will tell me, oh, can't use it in IE 5.5, but SVG is supported in IE 9 and up. Now we can also do something like, can I use WebSockets? Hey, we have partial support in IE and Firefox and Chrome. And then there's also different options, like can I use one line WebSockets? and it will give you a very short summary of whether or not you can use that particular feature, tells you what percentage is supported, and whether or not it is recommended. So just a quick little command line tool that we thought you might find very useful. Go ahead and check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is the 10 commandments of good form design on the web. So if you want to have good form for your forms, this is the place to look. First one says that you should always provide a clear, always visible label for each field. So here is a bad example where there's labels and you type stuff in and then, well, you're not really sure what the label said originally. And this is better where you always have the labels visible so that when you type things in, it's easy to understand. And I actually like the design of this article. They show stuff in red when it's bad and green when it's good. So these are small labels, and then they make the labels larger. That's an important thing to keep in mind when creating forms. It sounds really obvious, but you should have a big enough font size so that you can easily scan the form and go down the page and figure out what kind of information you need to put in. There's 10 of these, but I'll just keep it to the first three. The last one, I really like this, is to provide easily tappable areas. You want to provide an area on the screen that is going to be easy not only for people using a mouse and keyboard to input their data into, but also for people that are on mobile. And really, when you're designing sites, you should be thinking about mobile first and then working your way up to larger and larger screen sizes. So if your site looks good on a mobile device and you have these large tappable areas that are better for a crude input device like your finger versus a cursor, then you should be good to go. Anyway, there are a couple more of these on the page, so definitely be sure to check that one out. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Tiny Color Picker. As you might guess from the name, this is a very small color picker that you can use on your web pages. Oh, I was thinking it was for smaller colors rather than like like, oh, like big colors. Yeah, like, like, a, like a deep burgundy red rather right. than, than a bright big red. Right. No, that's not it at all. Uh, this is just a small color picker that you can use on your web page. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Here is a little circle on the page, and if I tap that, oh, look at that, we got a color picker. And we can pick from literally any of these colors in this circle. I'm going to tap on purple. Wow, look at that. A, that's at least like a dozen colors. Wow. Yeah, yeah. look at that. Huh? You ready? Oh. Do that again. Look at that. Whoa. What? Literally any one of those colors. Are we on a web page or in Photoshop? This is a, this is a web page. Okay. Right. I know you couldn't believe that to begin with, but boy. I can't believe it. Yeah, well, suspend that disbelief, buddy, because here we go. Look at this one. This has an image. Oh, my gosh. And then anywhere that I click inside of this image, look at that. That's what? the color. Yeah. What is happening? What is happening is your mind being blown. Tomorrow is today. Yesterday 
is not the future. So anyway, you can take pretty much any one of these. It has some properties. You can give it the hex or the RGB value. And then it has only one single event, the change event, and that triggers when a new color is set. And then you can do something when that is set. This works either on forms or just anywhere on your web page. Go ahead and check that out. What a time to be alive. Next up is a mobile-friendly test to test whether or not your site is going to look good on mobile devices. Of course, when you are testing, you should always try to use a real device. But if you're just doing something really quickly, Google has this awesome mobile-friendly tester. So we can type in something like, I don't know, my website, nickpettit.com, and it's going to analyze it. And this is actually doing more than just analyzing the design. It's Google going through and analyzing your page and giving you an idea of how the Googlebot is actually going to see the content on this page. And hey, look, it says, I am co-host of the Treehouse Show. And in fact, that is what I'm doing right now. But anyway, mobile-friendly test, pretty cool. You can go ahead and uh, analyze any any web page. Are you okay, Jason? Are they, yeah. Is it analyzing the Treehouse Show right now? I think so. I think Google is, uh, oh. yeah. Hi, Google. Yeah, it's watching us. Uh, let's go ahead and move on very quickly. Next up, we have the ECMAScript 6 Features Guide. Now, ECMAScript 6 is the next evolution of JavaScript. New version and the new standard has recently come out, and you can start using some ECMAScript 6 features today. If you would like to learn about them, this wonderful repository on GitHub, which you can find in the show notes, will walk you through some of the new features. Now, uh, some of the new features, we're not going to go over all of them because this is quite a bit of stuff, but Arrows, which you might have seen and been used to in CoffeeScript, are now available in ECMAScript 6. Now, these allow you to define functions in a shorthand manner. For example, uh, this for each statement usually would take a function, but instead of writing function with parentheses and an open uh, curly brace, we can just use this fat arrow and then place our function inside. Now, there is a little bit of a difference between fat arrows and skinny arrows. We're using the fat arrow syntax, which binds to this. So normally, we would have to define a different variable to keep place of the scope, but the fat arrow does that for us. So the inner this refers to the outer this. Next up, ECMAScript 6 defines classes as well. Now, this is interesting. Class-based design was something that we would use quite a bit in JavaScript, but there were, I don't want to say hacks, but this is just simple syntactic sugar over the normal object-oriented pattern. So you use this class statement and extend it from another class. You get this nice constructor syntax, which is very, very useful. And we're not going to go over everything, but go ahead and give this a read. This is going to be the next version of ECMAScript 6. There's no time better than the present to get familiar with it. Very nice stuff. Well, that's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, go ahead and check out the links in our show notes. We want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you next week.